Um, like Lynn said, I'm going to talk today about uh, service mesh and, uh, and, and tenancy. And some of the problems that we've run into, we, you know, where, where I work here at Solo, where we work with uh, people adopting service mesh. And, um, you know, we'll look at some practical examples. I'll try to mix in some demos. Um, and then uh, we'll look at some of the things that we've done as uh, solutions that may be interesting to, uh, to you all. So like Lynn said, uh, my name is, is Christian, I'm a global field CTO at Solo. Um, I am super excited that I finally got, uh, me and Renor got uh, Istio in action out the door. That took three and a half years. There's, uh, I think, close to 500 pages of, of Istio knowledge in there accumulated over that time. And, um, you know, it, it, it went to print back in March. We are doing a Meet the Author. I thought it was a, it was a book signing, but it's a, we'll, we'll give away digital copies of, of the book, but you can also request uh, physical copies and we can send them out uh, af afterward. So at the Solo, Con, uh, the Solo Service Mesh Con booth at 510, uh, come stop by. So I work at Solo. You've probably seen a few of us speaking here today. We work on solving application networking problems. How do services connect? And how do we drive policy for those services across, you know, and anywhere where uh, workloads might be deployed? In Kubernetes, on VMs, across Kubernetes clusters, across um, uh, private and public clouds. And we bring a lot of uh, interesting open source technology to those solutions. So service mesh is a big part of it. Istio is a big part of it. Um, you know, eBPF, which we use to help uh, optimize the, the way the service mesh runs. Uh, and now, if you caught Edith's announcements earlier at the keynote, you know, bringing in Cilium and um, uh, layer three, layer four to, uh, to complement that, uh, that, that solution. If you're interested in these technologies, interested in, in being exposed to a lot of the customers and uh, use cases that we see and the solutions that we uh, push forward, we're hiring. So uh, definitely please uh, reach out. You may recognize some of us, uh, not only having spoken here, but being uh, uh, leaders and uh, contributors, maintainers in the open source uh, projects, Istio specifically. Um, you know, and, and we bring a lot of that expertise to our uh, to the people that, that we hire. So it's a good opportunity to learn as well as to our, uh, our, our customers. Um, I'll speed through some of these. I know some of the other sessions uh, uh, showed that. But getting to the, the, the main point, <laughs> the main uh, reason for this, uh, this talk. As I was saying, we work with uh, a lot of organizations that are adopting service mesh. And some of these organizations are the largest deployments in, uh, in, in the world or the most complicated um, or approaching the most complicated because of the types of organiz organizations that are adopting them. These are you know, financial services companies or insurance companies, retail companies, a lot of them that have been around for a really long time. They have ways of you know, how they run their business. They have uh, organizational policies that you would have never guessed would make sense um, just by working in the open source. You have to actually go <laughs> see and experience it for yourself, really. Um, and so one of the, one of the things that, that you see that comes up almost every single time is when you are adopting this new technology, when you're, when you're modernizing, you're bringing in containers, you're bringing in these, these, some of these cloud uh, solutions, how do you how do you expose these to the teams, to the developer teams? How do you integrate this in your platform? And tenancy is, uh, is, is something that frequently comes up, which is what we'll be talking about uh, today. I, uh, I was having a, uh, an interesting discussion with, uh, with a customer not that long ago, and um, they said they don't have this particular one, which I would have assumed of any of the customers that we talked with, uh, would have a, a big tenancy problem. They said, no, we don't have a tenancy problem because we run a single cluster per application. 
And I was thinking, well, they must have had some tenancy problem, otherwise they wouldn't have been running the, the, in that mode. But then I just threw this out there on Twitter and uh, got a really, really good response to it. And you could see uh, pe people, people were adopting and deploying Kubernetes clusters specifically and the way they looked at tenancy in, in all of the different uh, extremes that, that you could possibly imagine. One, you know, some, some people responded, oh yeah, we run massive, uh, uh, massive clusters, OpenShift clusters, or just wh whatever Kubernetes clusters, and uh, you know, they went into some of the details about uh, the tenancy problems there. Someone even responded that they run a single pod per cluster, which I thought uh, hopefully was not real. Um, but, but nevertheless, go, go through, the, you know, go, go through this, uh, this thread. There's some interesting things there. Um, but, but really, you know, the, the things that stood out, not only in that thread, but generally when, when we're talking about uh, tenancy and, uh, and, and why it gets hard, is it involves a lot of different facets. It involves the infrastructure, of course, um, you know, the, the way the teams are already organized and already working, and that's, that varies between organizations. Um, you know, how you isolate the uh, impact of one team doing something to disrupt uh, another team, and that itself can be at multiple levels. Uh, but today we're going to talk about when you adopt a service mesh, and you want to expose the capabilities of a service mesh, which are in some cases pretty, pretty broad and, uh, and very powerful. Um, how do you do that uh, across these various teams? What mechanisms might already exist in, in, in the mesh that you might be looking at? Now, of course, I've been involved with Istio for a long time. Uh, I'll be looking at this through the lens of Istio, uh, but, the, but the questions and the scenarios aren't, aren't tied to, uh, to Istio specifically. So let's take a very simple example where you have a you know, set of applications that you want to just expose for, uh, for, for consumption. Istio has uh, an, an ingress gateway, which not every service mesh has, but this is actually pretty, pretty useful uh, as a way to get started with a service mesh if you're not comfortable deploying sidecar proxies everywhere. Um, but starting with a single proxy, getting traffic into the system, and incrementally adding from there is a, is a good place to start. Now, when you have multiple teams that you might be servicing or, or enabling with, uh, with, a, with a mesh uh, or with, with, with a technology like this, you have to take into account, well, I need to expose the service a certain way for this team. And this team actually wants to own more control or have more control over uh, how it exposes its services. In Istio, there's already a split in the API between you know, what, 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 what happens on the gateway, what happens when we open a port, what protocol is it speaking, what security we might want to associate it with, with it, some simple security. Um, and then another part of the API that specifies traffic routing and um, matching and uh, splitting and, 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 and so on. So this, and this is the, the virtual service in, in Istio. So you can already see the API in, in Istio is, is thinking along the lines of, well, what, what are these different things that we can compartmentalize and, and configure? Let's jump real quick to a demo and see if, oh, I'm offline. I did connect to my phone, <laughs> let's see. Um, I wasn't expecting to be kicked off, but we're going to jump real quick if we can to a demo where we walk through some of the nuances and then some of the details of, uh, of Istio's API to get to that, um, you know, that sweet spot of it being able to enable multiple teams to, uh, to configure various parts of the mesh, even if you're just starting off in this case with, uh, with a gateway. And this looks like I lost that, so. One second. Can you still see this in the back? Is the text okay? All right, thanks. All right, we'll go here and we'll go here. All right. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at, like I mentioned, the Gateway API and the, and the Virtual Service API. I'm also, this is a live demo. I, I clearly didn't type that out. I had it scripted, but this is a live demo. Um, I'm usually terrible at, at, at typing live, so you're going to see the, the, the script here. But the first thing to notice is that we, we specify the gateway. It's pretty straightforward. We specified some security properties about it, uh, the port we want to open, and, and the protocol. We've also specified a host name where we want to match on, on traffic um, and then you know, eventually uh, delegate that to, uh, to something else that will uh, specify the routing rules, which is the virtual service. All right, so if you're familiar with Istio, it's pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward so far. Uh, we just want to expose a service on, on the gateway. You'll notice a couple things here, though. The first is in, in the gateway resource, we specify we want matching to happen, but only for... Um, uh, rules that ha that appear in a certain namespace. The second thing we'll notice is we can, from that matching rule, say, well, for uh, these rules, I want these to be applied to a certain gateway. So there's already things, there's already mechanisms in Istio to allow you to kind of split up and isolate exactly where the configuration should be coming from. So this is already applied. Let's uh, Let's actually call it should be able to see it. Okay, sorry, it's at, at the bottom there, but you should see the request actually goes through. And the, the, the next thing we want to take a look at is, well, what if there's a scenario where the, it, one of the teams wants to own a little bit more of the, uh, the traffic rules, but a platform team or the team that owns the gateway, they... They, they can't just hand off everything to, uh, to the end user team. Maybe they need to control things like rate limiting or they need to control things like external auth. But for specific regexes and, you know, how it gets to a specific service and how you split the traffic, we can delegate that. All right, so Istio does have a, uh, a delegation API. So if you were to look in the virtual service here, uh, you know, the reference docs here goes into the details of that. So let's, let's actually try that. We're going to expose a service, a new service that hasn't been exposed on the gateway yet, using the uh, the gateway API, and the, and we're going to delegate uh, traffic routing rules to the ratings team. And the way we do that, let's apply the the gateway real quick. The way we do that is by specifying that we're going to we're going to delegate the rules. Right. We'll control the top level domain matching. We can add additional capabilities there that the end user team shouldn't be configuring. And then we can delegate the traffic routing rules to, uh, to, the, to the team. So let's do that. Or, or take a look at the, this is what the delegate route looks like. We can see how they're, how they're connected right here. So let's, uh, let, let's apply that. So we did the, apply both of them. Now let's try to call the service. We should be able to see some response like we did in, in the previous example. But unfortunately we do not. So Istio does have the ability to delegate the routing table to uh, other teams. But there's some nuance here. So if we take a look at the, the gateway itself, we see that uh, like in the previous example, we were, we were actually telling Istio to pull the routing rules from a specific namespace. In this case, we don't want to let the ratings team decide what all of the routing rules are. So we're only delegating part of it. The routing rule still, the matching rule the, um, for the host name actually lives um, in, the, in the same namespace as, as this gateway resource, not with the, uh, the team. So... We got we to gotta understand that and make sure that we, under, that, that we configure things correctly uh, once we start going down the path of, uh, of, of delegation. So in this case, we removed the namespace um, semantics from the, the matching, and, uh, and now let's apply it. And now if we make the call, it should go through. And it does. 
Now, again, go to the docs, take a look at uh, reference, configuration, traffic management, go into the gateway, and um, if we take a look at those fields, we'll go into some detail about how to specify or when to specify namespace and when you're supposed to pull the rules a certain way and so on. So that's, that's, one, that's one component to, now if, if we think about splitting out traffic rules, we, we split out you know, what configuration belongs to what team, this is, this is kind of one of the first things that you can start to, to look at. Now if we take and expand this a little bit more to, you know, we, we looked at sort of the traffic coming in, how you start to think about uh, uh, tenancy at the, at the edge level. Now when services are communicating with each other and different teams are involved, right? Different teams own uh, some, some of the different services here. Um, we have to think about what that configuration looks like and what are some of the um, dynamics that happen there. But before we do that, Typically, these teams are operating on shared platforms, and these platforms are owned by some team, DevOps team, platform team, whatever, that are enabling the, uh, the, the mesh or exposing the capabilities of the mesh. And this team probably cares about things like security, like lifecycle, like high availability of services, failover of services, topology, this type of stuff. Um, Istio's API has a, uh, a, a set of components to be able to, to drive that, but it may overlap in some ways with what the end user teams start to use. And the end user teams, you know, let's say you, you own the service. So in this example, this is a recommendation service, which is calling another service, the purchase history service. All right, so maybe as the, as the developer or owner of the purchase history service, you care about um, you know, things like uh, how, how, how the host name gets matched or cores or traffic splitting. Maybe you're introducing a new version or something. All right. And so Istio's APIs for doing that are, you know, the virtual service, the destination rules, uh, potentially the sidecar resource. Now, as the caller of the service, you care about maybe slightly different things, timeouts and retries when you're calling the purchase history service. Now Istio, again, has the same, this, this API, virtual service, destination rule, and so on. And we've seen teams get confused about, well, who, who should own that resource? Should the team that provides the service own that resource? Or should it be shared somehow? And they should run through some you know, pull request mechanism to try to get everybody merged and get all the configs on the same page? Right? And so we see some of the, con so the contention that can come up around this API. Um, and you know, we've seen in various ways for uh, teams uh, trying, to, uh, trying to mitigate this. But what I'm gonna go into real quick is a little bit more detail. We're gonna go a, little, a layer lower because Istio's API does allow you to carve up the virtual service and expose certain capabilities for certain teams without um, impacting uh, e each other. All right, so let's take a look at demo two real quick. All right, so we're going to take a look at the. So imagine if you, for, for a second, there is a web API service. Ingress traffic comes in, hits the web API service. That service then calls another service, the recommendation service, and that service calls yet another one, the purchase history service. Now, by default, when we've deployed this in our, in our cluster, Istio configures the web API service to know about everything. And that might not be what, what we want, especially if we're thinking about tenancy and, and what should it know or what should it be, it be able to connect to. If we look at the, the clusters that the web API service knows about, if we come over here and take a look at the command line real quick. We're just asking if you know, just tell me about the clusters or the upstream services that the web API service knows about. We see it knows about a bunch of different things, including purchase history, ratings, recommendation, all this stuff. But web API only calls recommendation. 
we should configure it so that it only knows about the services in its own tenant space as well as any of the other services that it may need to consume. And so to do that, we're going to use in Istio the sidecar resource. We're going to trim down the configuration so that it knows only about the services that it needs to. And in this case, we're saying you, the web API service, you use the recommendation service. So that's, you're going you're gonna to know about that and you're going to know about the Istio control plane and anything else in your namespace in this case, I think. Yep. And, uh, and that's it. Right, so we'll, 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 we'll trim down the configuration there. So let's apply this. That got created. Now let's go back and check. What are the services upstream that the Web API service knows about? It knows about recommendation, and it knows about some other you know, help, helper services in the control plane and so on. It doesn't know about the whole list, and it doesn't need to. So we've started to kind of trim down and... Uh, um, and, and focus what the configuration should be for a particular tenant. Now we're going to run this again for the rest of the teams who own different uh, parts of the uh, application set that we have here. And we'll speed this up a little bit. Okay. Now the last little bit here that we're going to focus on is when we apply a configuration, a virtual service, or a destination rule, or you know, any, any of the configs where we might need to control the, the connectivity between services. You know, one thing I, I pointed out was the contention that we see between two different teams trying to share a virtual service, for example. But we don't have to share a virtual service. So in Istio, we can take a virtual service and we can explicitly say, that this configuration, this, these routing rules only apply for services that live here in this namespace. So maybe this is where the services are actually running. Like in this case, this would be the web API uh, virtual service. Maybe we can expose this directly into where the, uh, you know, the web API service actually runs. We can put that virtual service there. For clients that care about timeouts, retries, all this other stuff that might be different from what the server you know, is, is, is providing, they can create their own virtual service for this and put it in their namespace. And we can control that with the export to uh, um, stanza in, in the virtual service. So we can get very fine grain for where Istio's config appears and how, and, and how it's uh, applied to, uh, to the end workloads. So let's apply this and we'll apply it to some of the other services here real quick. And we're also going to take a look. Oh, I guess I didn't uh, reset the demo. Um, and we're also going to take a look at the uh, a, a, another configuration in Istio called the service entry. And the service entry allows you to configure access to other services that l either live outside of the mesh or to build a, 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 a globally aware name that can be then used to resolve workloads that might live in, in, in the mesh or across clusters. Right? So in this case, we've created a globally aware name called recommendation.istio.io, and the mesh then knows how to resolve those, uh, those endpoints. But we might not want every single tenant or everybody to know, or every cluster, especially if you start thinking about this in terms of multi-cluster, about this recommendation service. All right, we might only want to put this service entry in certain tenants and certain namespaces in certain clusters to control the visibility, even though it's a globally routable service. All right, so that, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> The 40 hours is catching up to me right now. Um, so in this case, we sp explicitly uh, exported the service entry to our uh, web API namespace. And so now the recommendations, global recommendation service is going to be available and routable from the, uh, you know, the web API uh, name namespace in this case. So uh, yes, so we should be able to call it and everything should still continue to work. back here. 
So what we just, oops, microphone, what we just saw is, you know, a couple of capabilities. They're kind of low level capabilities in Istio for controlling how configuration is exported, how, um, you know, configuration can be tailored or cut down, uh, how we can do things like delegation to, uh, to other teams. And all of these form the foundation for the ability to, to build a, a tenancy model on top, of the, on top of the service mesh. But if you were following along with me on the demos, it's, it's pretty tedious to try to think, at least for a single team, where does, where does this configuration need to live? Where does it need to go? Um, you know, you, you need to think about it a little bit. And now you start to expand that, you mix delegation, you mix, well, the gateway host matching can deal with uh, namespaces and is that virtual service really there? Uh, is it exported correctly? And now you start to take this across multiple services, hundreds of services across clusters now, um, trying to manage the tenancy model um, in your head is not ideal, uh, but this, this can get complicated very quickly. And so, what, what we work on with our customers at Solo and what we've seen people adopt in the community is building blocks, workflows on top of the constructs that Istio gives. Istio's API was intended to be sort of a lower level API with workflows built on, on top of it. And the, the, the tenancy construct is one that people have, have built. Um, you know, if you, if you look at the talks from uh, IstioCon this year and last year, you know, you see, you see organizations that have talked about their journey build uh, uh, th these, these types of constructs. So it basically comes down to who, who, who decides what this workflow is? Where does this live? How do you make it consistent? How do you make sure that there are no errors? Um, you know, this, like I said, this can be pretty tedious and error prone and, uh, and lead, to, lead to issues. Um, what we've worked on at Solo, and I think you've seen some uh, of the learnings that we've, uh, we've shared earlier today, is that we've, we've sort of combined GitOps with the smart controller that understands higher level policies and it can build a tenancy model. It can do the translation to Istio resources. It can set export to and the sidecar correctly and all this stuff so that you're not trying to get it right by hand, basically. Um, and so kind of kind of an overview is we, we cut down, instead of saying here's one API, the virtual service API that does all of this stuff, why don't we bring the level up a little bit higher? and say, hey, you need to focus on, well, I want my service to uh, correctly configure circuit breaking or these resilience pieces, timeouts, retries, whatever. Um, and then I wanna use labels and selectors to apply this to a, a workload, a bunch of, bunch of workloads, an entire tenant or entire platform. Um, and so we've broken down the API a little bit more, made it a little bit higher level um, and then built a tenancy model around that. So we call it workspaces. It's basically a bucket or a grouping of uh, uh, service mesh policies that then get translated, come back here, get translated to the Istio resources that correctly handle um, you know, the, the, those lower level uh, tenancy constructs. And all of this can be driven by GitOps. Um, you know, Alex did a, uh, a talk earlier, lightning talk earlier, about uh, the controller model and GitOps and, and how all this uh, can, can tie in. Go take a look at that. I don't have time for a demo. Um, definitely want to leave with uh, links for learning more. Uh, we do workshops on this type of, uh, on this type of material in depth. Um, and, um, you know, we, we, we offer certifications. And so go check out these links. And uh, like I said, we're hiring. Uh, certainly reach out with questions and I uh, look forward to seeing you uh, at 510 for uh, the book giveaway. Thanks. Awesome. I don't believe I can speak after 24 hours stuck in the plane, not to mention showing a live demo. Well done, Christian. Thanks. <laughs>